Hi, this is Sarah from Imaginary Living. This is our tutorial for folded paper creatures. You can get the PDF with detailed instructions at imaginaryliving.com forward slash subscribe. To get started, you will need construction paper, scissors, non-toxic glue, toothpicks, a ruler or the template from the PDF, and a pencil. It's helpful to have a hole punch, painter's tape, and markers and pens too. Here's an example of what we're going to end up with. These creatures consist of two polygonal shapes stuck together with glue. Once you have the basic shape assembled, you can really add any kind of accessories or features to turn it into any kind of creature you want, real or imaginary. So let's get started. First, you're going to need two squares, one four inches by four inches and the other two inches by two inches. You can either measure with a ruler and fold and cut like I'm doing here, or you can cut out the template on the PDF that you can download from our website and just trace around that and cut it out. Let's skip ahead a little bit. So start with the larger square and we need to fold it in half in every possible way. So fold along the diagonal in half, the other diagonal, and then along the vertical and horizontal axes. That's worth it to take the time to get things lined up pretty well because it will make a difference in the final product. When you unfold, you'll see you have a star pattern, and that's gonna serve as a guideline for the rest of our work here. So now we're gonna do something I call the ice cream cone fold. You wanna take one edge of the paper and line it up with a center fold, and then do the same thing on the opposite side. Try to get the bottom lined up as best you can. And you'll end up with something that looks like an ice cream cone. You want to take your pencil and mark at the very tip of the ice cream cone so that you can keep track of what you've done. Rotate 90 degrees and do the same thing. This is quite thick paper I'm using, so depending on what paper you use, you may find it a little bit easier to fold. Um, but it is nice to use a thick, heavy paper because your creature will be a lot sturdier. It does make it a little bit trickier to fold. So when you folded your last corner and you unfold the paper, there'll be this really complex star pattern now and there should be X's at all four corners so that you know you did all sides. So now you can see there's a shallow triangle on each side. And that's what we're going to focus on now. I'm just outlining it in pencil so that it's easier for you to see. On the diagram, there's a little star inside a circle at the point of those triangles. We want to pinch that little spot and pull it up so that we're making these little bunny ears. Now's the time when you want to go ahead and get your glue ready. So just squeeze out a little pool of it onto an old lid or even a scrap piece of paper just so that it's out and ready to use and have your toothpicks handy because they're going to be what you use to apply the glue. And it's nice to have your painter's tape ready too and I like to pre-tear some pieces so that they're handy. It's just nice to use the painter's tape to hold the polygon closed after you glue it so you don't have to hold it for a longer amount of time. So now you're going to take your paper again and find that spot and pinch it and then apply some glue to the outside of that shallow triangle. So this is the side of the paper that's been against your work table facing away from you. And then squeeze it together 
and hold until it starts to adhere. For this glue, I'm using the weld bond. Of 10 to 15 seconds, it'll start to stick. But the painter's tape is really handy if you have some around. It'll help keep the polygon together as we fold around the other edges. So here's that triangle on the other side, the opposite side that we just did. And you're gonna apply glue to that side as well. And just add the painter's tape if you want to here as well. If you don't use the painter's tape, you'll just have to hold on to it a little bit longer until you're sure it's nice and firmly adhered. So now you've got like this little pocket, and we're going to go to the other sides. So you can just kind of press down on that spot again. At this point, it's almost like a little mouth. I feel like you could make a really cool puppet just using this shape. But we just need to apply glue to these surfaces on the inside of this shape. And then squeeze it together, hold it, and seal it up with your painter's tape if you want. So at this point, you know, to not collapse this hollow form, you have to kind of rub gently but firmly. If you do end up squishing it, you can usually pop it back out. It's not that big of a deal. So this is what the bottom looks like. And from the side, it's this nice little cone shape. All right, let's move on to making the head. So you're gonna need your smaller square, your two inch square, and it needs to be folded in half and then into fourths. So you can either fold and then fold the folded piece, which can be hard if your paper is very stiff, or you can fold it in half and then fold the sides to meet the middle. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm folding the, the edges in to meet the middle. This paper is pretty thick, so it's still a little bit hard to get that crease in a smaller piece, but not impossible. The head is a lot more forgiving than the body in terms of you know, not being perfectly accurate with your folding, uh, just because we are going to make some cuts in this piece instead of needing all the folds to line up perfectly. So don't worry about it too much. This square, if it's a little off square, it won't be a big deal. And if the lines aren't perfectly straight, it won't be a big deal either. All right, so now when we open it up, we see we have this grid and we're just gonna make four cuts. So there's, we made like a little square within a square and we're gonna cut these lines. This is on the template on the instruction sheet as well if this isn't clear in the video. So just four little cuts. Snip. Snip. And snip. So now you want to make sure you have glue ready again. Maybe the other glue has gotten a little too tacky in the time it's been out. So give yourself a little more. And we're just going to take the flap we cut 
and slide it under the one next to it like we're folding the corner of a box. Just put a little bit of glue underneath there. And then you're just gonna need to hold that for you know, 10 to 15 seconds, however long it takes to adhere well. And then we're gonna keep going around doing the same thing. It's nice to keep the same pattern. So if you're taking the flap on the right and sliding it under the one to the left, just keep doing that as you go around counterclockwise. There's absolutely no reason why you couldn't do it in the other direction, right flap under clockwise. Just whatever way you start, continue in that way so that it's consistent. And I don't really find the painter's tape to be as necessary here. I think because we've cut these flaps, there's not as much tension on the paper trying to pull the form apart. So really just holding on to it for 15 seconds or so seems to be enough to get a nice good adhesion between the two pieces. So that's the finished head. And if there are any little areas of the flap sticking up, you can just slide a little glue in there with your toothpick and stick it down. And now it's time to put it together. So I like to dry fit the pieces, just kind of stick the head on the body and decide what's going to be the front if one side looks a little neater than another. So when I'm happy with how it's going to fit, I'm just going to flare out the bottom flaps on the head. And then I'm just going to make sure I know how far down on the body I want the head to sit so that it feels really secure and it looks pretty seamless once it's glued on. So then you just need to apply some glue to the inside of the flaps on the head. And I would definitely do it this way because if you try to put the glue on the body, you might not get it in quite the right spot. But this way you know the glue is going to go where it's needed. And you do want to take off the painter's tape. It would have been smart to do this before I put the glue on the head. Or even to set the head down while I'm doing this. But, you know, I like to do things with my hands full apparently. Alright, so now you have to remember which way you want it to be your front and you're just going to stick it on and just make sure you firmly press those flaps on all sides and hold them for again 10 to 15 seconds is all it really takes for this glue. And that's it. So now you have your head attached to your body and you're ready to create your character however you want. So I was inspired by the color of this paper to make a fox and I'm speeding through this part just because this is really trial and error. You just kind of figure out what the features are going to be for your creature and then you just kind of cut them out. You can sketch them first if you want or just go for it. And then some of the larger things that you're going to attach, if they're attaching to a part of the polygon that's folded, that has a you know, outward curve or a fold in it, you might want to add a little bit of shape to that part before you attach it to help it adhere to. I don't know if you notice here, but I did make two maybe three different sets of ears because I couldn't quite get them the way I wanted them. And I finally was happy with one of those sets. 
and I made the fox's snout and put its little black nose on. That's what I'm doing right there. Starting to look pretty foxy. And then using the hole punch is such an easy way to make eyes. Just a little black marker and they're perfect. Stick them right on. And then I'm making little tiny legs. Tiny scissors are helpful when you're trying to cut tiny little parts. It can be hard to maneuver those big scissors. So I just kept playing around with this and changing things until I ended up with this. As you can see, I added some more details and he has a lot of personality. And let's just look at some other ideas. So these are all creatures that my mom came up with. It's a duck, a mouse, a cow. This crazy bird lady says, take me to your art room. I think that's a self-portrait by my mom. There's a puppy dog and a little pig with fluttery eyelashes and a cat with a fish. And then over here, this is one that her student made. So this was a middle school student who made this guy and he's got a lot of personality. He's got these crazy spindly legs. But you can see, you can do anything you want, real or imaginary. It's really up to you. So thanks for joining us for this tutorial. And hopefully everything made sense to you. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below this video and I'll try to help you out. We'll be back with more projects soon, but till then, create happy!